All right, so after my last boom bap tutorial, the last comment was someone asking me for a dark mob deep style video. And since they're one of my all time favorite hip hop groups, I had to do it. Havoc's a genius when it comes to sampling. And we all know how legendary the beat for Shook One's part two is. So this might be tough, but I'm going to be using some of his techniques to try and get that authentic gritty sound. So let's get straight into it. All right, so there's a few different styles of mob deep beats we could make. We could go with some early 2000s out of control type beat, or we could take it a bit further back and go for that 90s grungy underground hip hop sound. And that's the style I want to make today because I feel like that's what he's known best for, especially with tracks like Shook One's Part 2 or Survival of the Fittest. And I found this jazz sample which might work. Sample sounds sick, and I've already got an idea of how I want to flip it. So really, when you listen to that, you wouldn't imagine a dark, grungy hip hop beat, but that's why Havoc was so sick. He'd find tiny pieces in samples and flip them into something crazy. So there's really an art to sampling. And one technique that he'd use a lot is just time stretching. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to start by just cutting that beginning part off. I've got the BPM set to 90. And I think I just want to take this beginning part. So to stretch, just make sure this stretch button's on. And now I can hold alt, click and drag. And when I stretch it, it's going to change the pitch. And because I'm making it longer, the pitch is going to go down. So it's going to sound darker. See, when I start to stretch it, almost sounds like some Shook Ones vibes. Just a tiny bit further back. I just wanted to get the right tone first. So from here, I'm going to consolidate that track because now when I bring this into something like FL Slicer, it's going to be the slow down version. All right, so I've just double clicked there and I'm actually going to open this in Edison. And instead of the slicer, I've opened FPC because what I want to do is take micro chops, kind of like Havoc would do, and then drag them into each pad. And then I can chop using my drum pad. So I'll show you what I mean. So I think each of these notes I can take. So we'll grab this first one. Then I'm going to drag it onto this pad. And then whenever I'm working in FPC, I always go to each pad and set the cut to one and the cut by to one. That just means the notes aren't going to overlap. So as soon as I press one, then press another, it's going to cut the first one off. So let's carry on. We'll take this. Grab that one. This one too. And then we'll just keep going. I don't think I want that one. Definitely want this. And when I'm chopping, I just leave this on snap to zero crossing. Just means you're gonna get a cleaner chop and you can find parts that don't have a click at the beginning or end. And if you've got a drum pad or a keyboard with some drum pads on it, if you're struggling to map them, I usually just click this arrow and then select map notes for entire bank. And then I go from the bottom left to the top right. So like this. And now I can play with the chops. All right, so I'm thinking something like this. All right, so kind of a sick chop, but I still want to take it further. So first of all, I'm going to quantize the notes, Control and Q. We'll level out the velocity, just holding Shift, clicking and dragging. You don't need to do this, but if you press Control and L, it will link the notes up. So with some of them, I'm just hearing a bit of a click. So I'm going to turn on the envelope and just bring that attack back. I can also drag this up. Sustain can go all the way up. Same with Decay, really. Or you can do it manually like this. So yeah, bring everything up and then just do the same with the others. So yeah, any with a click, just do that same process. I'm just going to change that pattern a little bit. I just want to switch up something here. Yeah, so maybe like this. Okay, so next I've just sent this to an empty insert. I'm going to click down here and then Alt and R just to render it. And I want to try and time stretch it again just to see what kind of vibe we get. So let's just make it eight bars this time. All right, it's a bit too low, but we could reset the pitch. Kind of like this, you know. I think we could get a grittier vibe from it. Okay, next I'm going to add vinyl. We'll turn the dust all the way down. And then let's try 1930. Or 1950. No, I think all the way. We'll turn the dust down too. Yeah, it sounds kind of hard. Sounds more like it's taken from an actual vinyl. Bring the BPM up a little bit. And a lot of his beats were simple. It would be something like this and maybe a couple of layers taken from different samples. But before I think about adding anything else, my logic in there, I want to get some drums in. And for the drums, I want some gritty boom bap stuff. So let's see what we've got. And for the drums, a lot of times producers in the 90s would just take a drum break from another sample and then pitch it up or chop out the drums from it. But for this one, I've got so many drums in my library already. So I'm going to see what I can find.
yeah. and for boom bat beats you don't want everything perfectly on the grid so even with the snares i might just move some just holding alt clicking and dragging okay let's layer that i'm gonna add some reverb to those Yeah, about there. Okay, we're grabbing a hat as well like this. And for the hats, I want them to be real natural. So I'm just going to record them in. Okay, from here, I'm just going to go in and fine tune it a bit. Because I want them to be off, but some of them are a bit too off. So I'm just going to bring those back. See how it sounds natural, but not too off. Well. Let's just try some others. Might even have a better one in my Source Boom Bap kit. Like the Styles one or this West Coast one. I think this one. Right, for the kick, I want a realistic one. So let's start with something like this, boost it a bit. And then same with this. I'm just going to record something in. I might actually bring the kicks to the same velocity and then just bring some of them down, like these ones. I'm gonna find a better kick though. Maybe this, we could pitch it down. Just wanna bring down some of the high end of that kick. And maybe boost some punch. I'm just gonna bring that boost down. I don't need to clip it so much for these type of beats. Might even move some of these kicks as well. Right, let's add a bass in as well and for the bass i think we could go to sakura and then if we go to bass and then the one is deep house yeah i think something like this or we pitch these up and then just switch up the end here maybe this one down Yeah, I'm feeling that. And I want to enhance this bass a bit. So I'm going to use our bass. And just so you're not randomly setting the frequency, what I like to do is set it to the root note. So let me show you what I mean. If you pull up the parametric EQ, if I right click on one of these and go to key, I know that my root note is D sharp. And it's going to tell me the frequency here. This one might be too low, but if we set it to this, so 77.8, we could just do 78. It's going to be more accurate. So this is before and then after. This makes it a bit fire. Okay, I'm also just gonna add this tambourine on some of the snares, or I can just layer it, but I won't have this all the way through. This adds a nice layer. And honestly, for a lot of the old school mob deep beats, you wouldn't find much more drums than that. Sometimes you might have an open heart or some percussion, but most of the time it's just a simple beat to keep your head nodding. Might add one or two more things, but for now, I actually wanna group these drums and we'll just create a drum bus. So I'm just holding control, clicking and dragging, and then I'll right click on an empty insert, root to this track only, and this is gonna send all the drums there. And from here, I want a bit more grit. So I wanna run it through a tape machine like RC20. I'm just gonna choose the vinyl one preset. I'll bring the noise down. I'm gonna bring that low back in. Let's change the distortion as well. Try the crunch one. That sounds hard. So this is before and after. It's as more grip. All right, and I definitely want something that can separate the hook. So I'm thinking it's either something more melodic or some kind of effect. Okay, I just found this siren. Yeah, perfect. All right, one last thing I want to add is some kind of drum fill, but just a short one. So I'll see what I've got. Something like this. Let's just bring that back. And we'll send that to the drum boss too and just normalize it. And I only want to take one part of that. I think just this section. Yeah, hard. And then I can cut the drums when that comes in. I could keep adding to it, but I just wouldn't have that authentic feeling. So let's cop it out a few times and the arrangement's gonna be really simple. We're just gonna have it playing like this. So yeah, just an eight by intro. We'll bring the bass in, but I'll cut these middle parts out. And then we'll bring something else in. Maybe we could bring the hats in too. And then the kick in just before the drop. And then one snare. So this will be the hook and then when it comes to this section we'll bring this out and the siren and let's see how it transitions yeah maybe something like this
And then in this section, we'll just take the siren out and the bass. And maybe we'll take the snare out here. And then we could just trim the hats like this. And then, yeah, let's just take that and copy it over. Okay, one thing I'm gonna do is add a ride. Okay, last thing I'm gonna add is just a crash sound. Okay, and last minute touches to the mix. I'm just boosting the piano a bit with a compressor. I just wanted to capture some of the peaks and then bring everything up together. Just so it's more consistent. And yeah, let's have a listen from the beginning. And I know this beat's really simple, but that's what the authentic sound is. If you don't believe me, check out Shook Ones Part 2. Check out Survival of the Fittest. Pretty much any 90s mob deep beat. Things started getting a little bit more advanced in the early 2000s, but this one's for the 90s. So let's have a listen from the beginning. And before we do that, let's just add that noise in. Alright, so here's what we've got. Yeah, sending this one out. So yeah, I added an acapella to this one just to make sure it works. Simple intro too, just the hats and the bass. Yeah, I think this one came out hard. Definitely gives me that nice feeling. The actual track is structured a bit different. But this is a standard arrangement. You walking with your head down, scared to look. You shook, cause ain't no such things as halfway. Let me know if you're feeling this one in the comments. And if you think I captured the vibe right. It's similar to Vietnam. Now we all grown up and old and be on the cops control. So yeah, just simple changes, to keep it interesting. Trying to back me and get rocks to the bottom of Mac one double. I touch you and leave you with not much to go home with. My skin is thick. So yeah, if you're feeling this one and you want more boom back tutorials, push up here. Or to learn about sampling even more, click up here. So I wear a slug proof underneath my guest. Yeah, we live in this till the day that we die. Survival of the fit only 